oh man, life is so hard. It's just, it's, it's really hard to be me. But has your father ever killed you for sleeping with one of his concubines? That's what this guy did. A long time ago, there was an Aztec guy called Nezual Coyotl. Nezual Coyotl. The fattest name you could ever have, and it means fasting coyote, which is extra fat. He was born in 1402 in Mexico, but back then it wasn't Mexico, it was a city called Texcoco. And I don't know what it is with South Americans and that co sound like Mexico, Texcoco. I, I don't, what's with this obsession? You know, it's confusing. Hmm. Anyway, I wanted to talk about this guy because he wrote really cool poetry. And poetry is, is cool and stuff. Yeah, poetry, it's cool and artistic and cool and stuff. It's cool. But what's cool is that he wasn't a hipster sipping lattes made by a barista in a city. He was a warrior, architect, king, and a poet. Did I leave anything out? Um... He was also a boss. This guy's father was the king of Texcoco, but his father was assassinated when he was only 15 by the Azcapotzalco. So what did Netzual Coyotl do? He formed the Triple Alliance with Tenochtitlan, Texcoco, and Tlacopan, and they killed they really killed quite a few of the Azcapotzalco. They defeated them. It was it was a win for Netswal Coyotl, and he returned triumphantly to Texcoco, being like, Bitches, I'ma write some poetry. And yeah, it took me a bit of time to learn how to pronounce or pronounce these words, but that's alright. Uh, it, it's, it's hard, it's all about life. Then what did he do? He built the Dam of Tenochtitlan, which is basically like a swamp city, like built into a lake. Like I'm talking like some Naboo kind of shiznit right here. And without the dam, it wouldn't have been a swamp city. It would have basically just been a pool. He also built the Chapultepec aqueduct system, which still exists in some parts today. Okay, folks, it's poetry time. It is time for me to spit some rhyme towards you. Let's hit it up. We only rise from sleep. We come only to dream. It is not true, it is not true, that we come on earth to live. As a herb in springtime, so is our nature. Our hearts give birth, make sprout, the flowers of our flesh. Some open their corollas, then they become dry. And I love that ending, because it's got that kind of modern-day nihilism, but instead of being a, a cowardly, bitch-ass embarrassment, it's a real brave kind of nihilism that says, hey, if nothing matters, then the only important thing is having a good death. You know, going out like a king. I'm not afraid of death, I'm afraid of having a bad death. That's, that's king mentality. And for the Aztecs, everything was about having a good death, you know? I mean, people look at the sacrificial side of the Aztecs and go, Oh, that's a, ooh, hoo -hoo. that's a it's, a, it's a little gruesome, kind of, ooh. But then again, the Aztecs would probably look at us and be like, Oh, so you sit on couches and watch TV and fight wars to spread democracy in foreign countries? <laughs> Get a load of these guys. The battlefield is the place where one toasts the divine liquor in war, where a stain red the divine eagles, where the tigers howl, where all kinds of precious stones rain from ornaments, where wave headdresses rich with fine plumes, where princes are smashed to bits. When these guys sacrificed someone, not only did they do it epically, because they didn't just slit someone's throat, no, they would tear someone's heart out while they were alive, but also they had a good reason, kind of, of doing it, and that was to keep the sun rising. I mean, why do you think the sun rises every day? Hey, why? Why do you think so? Because the Aztecs sacrificed. Where do you think gravity comes from? Hey? Do you have answers for me? Huh. Checkmate, atheists.
and libtards. In fact, there was one celebration called the Festival of Tox Cattle, where the Aztecs would take a, a young person and basically say, hey, you're gonna pretend you're a god for about a year, and you're gonna enjoy yourself, you're gonna, you're gonna live literally like a god, and then at the end of the year, you're a living symbol and we're gonna sacrifice you. There's something special about that. Interesting and special. I don't understand it. I don't think we're ever going to be able to, un to understand it. Like, some of the explanations I've heard are a little silly. Like, I came across one explanation where it's like, oh, they were just dealing with trauma, and they were processing their trauma by sacrificing people. Like, you know, once there'd been a really big natural disaster, like an earthquake or a tsunami, and to kind of deal with how stressful that experience had been, they sacrificed people, because I guess that's a way of feeling like you're in control, I guess, I, yeah, it doesn't, it, you know, uh, doubt, I'm pressing X, folks. But getting back to Netswal Coyotl, he actually wasn't that much of a fan of the sacrifice stuff, he, he still let it go down in his cities, which, you know, I think makes sense, because when you have ritual sacrifice going down, I think it's kind of unstrategic to suddenly be like, hey guys, you should stop doing sacrifice. Oh, why? Why are you surrounding me? Oh, no. But yeah, in the city of Texcoco, he built these temples where he had this, like, almost Buddhist kind of ritual of fasting and, you know, giving gifts of incense to statues and things like that, which it is kind of weirdly Buddhist. Um, it wasn't Buddhism. I, we don't really know what it was. It was just the musings of a literal warrior, architect, poet, king. Which is so... I just... That's that's great. That's so cool. Like, you could take the most tank bodybuilder military specialist in our day and age, put him next to Netswal Coyotl, and it would be like, oh, so you're a warrior, okay, and maybe you're a bit of a king, okay, but are you a poet and an architect? Mmm... Nah, you haven't really mastered all elements of life. Step it up. On top of that, Netswal Coyotl also turned Texcoco into what some historians have called the Athens of the West, which, like, whoa, that's... that's cool, that's stylish, that's vaporwave, basically. Because what he did is he gathered the Tlamatini, which were the wise men, and he brought them all together into his city, and he created the Council of Music, which was focused on the arts, and focused on what they called flower and song, which was, you know, basically poetry and all kind of beautiful, nice things, statues and stuff. Lol, I love this uh, statue of... Uh, a guy called Zochi Pili, the Flower Prince, where it's like, you know, some people have suggested that he's heavily stoned in this photo. And if you look at it, it's like, oh yeah, that guy's certainly struggling with his mental stability. Maybe that guy probably couldn't stand up quickly. Potentially. Potentially, it's just an observation. Maybe he's a little high. He's, I mean, he's also covered in mushrooms. But he was still a tough ruler, you know? I mean, if you were a thief, you were stoned to death. If you were an adulterer, you were stoned to death. And, and yeah, the time came when one of his sons slept with one of his concubines. And he was like, nope. I'm not standing for this. This I will not accept. I'm drawing the line right here. And he killed him. Uh, you know, I mean, hey, couldn't they have had some kind of dialogue to unpack the emotions? Oh, no, couldn't they have done that? Cool, guys, I'll leave it there. Uh, check out this video, and I'll read out another uh, poem by Netswal Coyotl. I love the song of the mockingbird. Bird of 400 voices. I love the color of the jade stone and the intoxicating perfume of flowers. But more than all, I love my brother, man.